Hello friends, so with this session I am trying to put forward a case study on a very interesting feature of SQL Server that is Service Broker and uh, it's not the explanation of Service Broker but it's rather a case study and an ex example, a real time uh, example on Service Broker and, and the way uh, how uh, we can leverage this interesting feature uh, for us. So uh, what I have, consider a very hypothetical uh, sh online shop shopping website or, or, a, or an app. Uh, so this what, what this online shopping website does is, is sell some products A, B, C, I mean a laptop or, or a cell phone or a refrigerator. So I, using this uh, service broker we'll see how we can place the orders uh, in, a, in, a, in an organized manner and to do so I have created a service broker de demo database and in this database what we have here is, is, is a customer table first of all this customer table has a customer name, email ID, address, contact numbers and, and, and I have inserted two records uh, in this customer table next I have a product table which, which hosts the product which are available and it has the product ID, its description, uh, a bit flag indicating if the product is available or not uh, and warranty in days, the number of days uh, of warranty which the product actually has and, and the price and the delivery time in days that is the amount of time that uh, the people uh, or, or the website people would need to deliver this product and I have inserted some records into this table then I have the orders table which is when the product is uh, when the order for a particular product is placed this order table would be actually uh, populated so what I have in this table is order ID, product ID, customer ID uh, the product ID and the customer ID is referencing to uh, the respective tables then I have the order date quantity uh, and the amount paid uh, and also the warranty start and the end date so uh, and in this database we have uh, created two stored procedures uh, which will process the service broker now we'll get into the details but first let's try to see how our thing uh, how our, our service broker actually works so I'm truncating the table order and our agenda is is to receive uh, uh, you know the orders for a particular product and then process them so by which we mean we are going to populate the orders table and then we also want to send an email to the customer uh, updating him that the order was placed successfully so to do so I have created a stored procedure process order so this stored procedure actually uh, receives or, or uh, pulls out the data from the queue that is the service broker queue I'll explain that later and then from this queue it's it uh, processes the order from the queue and, and then populates the order table and next what we have here is uh, when a new order ID is placed uh, in the orders table it is going to run us a, a, a SSIS package what this SSIS package will do it will act as an email system so I have this SSIS package stored in my uh, SQL server basically if you can see it is it is there in the SQL server itself on the integration services and that is why I'm using the DT exec command against the SQL server and then running this to uh, running this SSIS package on the on the server and the only flag that is uh, that is only only variable which is set at the runtime is the order ID so order ID is a dynamic value which is passed on to this SSIS package and then we are running this SSIS package so let's just try to see how uh, this thing works so I am just trying to queue three orders and this order will be So basically what, what we see here is we are trying to queue a order ID, sorry a product ID, then the customer ID and the quantity. So these are the four values that we are going to, you know, I mean uh, the website would basically uh, record the customer ID for a registered customer, the quantity of products 
and then the product ID. We are considering a hypothetical scenario where a customer can, pro, uh, can place order for only one product. We are not considering multiple products uh, for, for orders. So considering this uh, scenario, we are going to uh, queue three orders basically and this is what we have done. Now what we see here is we have these three orders already queued into the service service broker. So service broker uh, will start processing these orders and uh, one at a time. And this is a asynchronous. I mean, uh, service broker is an asynchronous message processing. So once we queue these uh, these orders to service broker, we can forget uh, the whole forget the whole thing and then uh, carry on with our uh, processing. I mean, the websites can simply queue the, their orders to this. Uh, queue and in the service broker and the rest of the things will be handled by the service broker so what this service broker will do it will process one orders at a time asynchronously so uh, and then it will it will uh, do all the rest of the uh, processing of the job so basically what we have here is 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 a we can call an executable in the form of a T uh, SQL agent job. The process order is, is a SQL agent job which keeps running continuously. So when uh, when an order is being placed, basically this job, if you see the properties, this job runs indefinitely and picks up the order from the service broker queue and processes them. So this is nothing but it is going to run a procedure. So which is the procedure? It is it is going to run exec pro USP process from queue. So that is the stored procedure that keeps uh, running. So what is the stored procedure? Is this is a stored procedure which is uh, running and calling a process order stored procedure which we have here, and and this procedure runs indefinitely. And each time it calls, it after calling it it waits for five seconds. So it it is basically processing each order at a delay of five seconds so again getting back we can see two of the orders which we have queued have been processed so in this process that that is the SQL agent job for us and SQL agent job calls this process from queue procedure which in turn indefinitely keeps calling for each order it calls process order stored procedure and, uh, and, and process order stored procedure processes the order which is queued in the service broker so basically it retrieves top one from the queue in the form of a stack and it, it uh, processes them and it's, it's in first in first out kind of a queue that service broker hosts so the order which is which is, which is queued first is, is pulled out and then service from the service uh, broker receive queue and then that's processed so if we can see the order table orders table we will find all the three orders one at a time have been processed so there is none so all the three orders which we have queued have been processed and also there should be three emails fantastic so each time a uh, order is placed, we, we also send an email using the SSIS package. So order confirmation from ABC online shopping order ID 1. So we have this complete message for uh, the order that was placed first. So if we take a look for all both the other orders, we pull out these details. So this is this is the order for all the three messages uh, I mean messages for uh, for the orders that were placed now looking at the SSIS package what this SSIS package does is it accepts only one parameter that is the order ID and from the order ID if we go ahead from the order ID it is going to retrieve the rest of the values uh, from inner join uh, inner joining the data between orders product and customers table for a particular order ID so basically if we see the parameters that we have here is there is only one input parameter which is the order ID and the rest of the parameters are all of output type so we get the email address that is from the customers uh, customers table we get the customer address customer contact his name warranty start date end date the delivery date 
the total amount that was charged, the, pro uh, the product description and the quantity of product ordered. All these things are, are actually of output type. And based upon this, we actually have the complete email. Uh, we, we accept these read-only variables and, and then frame the complete email uh, and, and send it across to the customer. So that is what this SSIS package does. Uh, this is relevant to uh, the email. I mean, if you want to know how the email is sent, refer my e send email uh, blog. Otherwise, the entire thing is pretty much same. Is basically it, it basically there's no attachment here. It's a simple e email which uh, which is configured and sent across. So that's all that this package does. Now, getting back to the service broker, uh, what we have here in the service broker is let's try to see we have we uh, first of all we uh, are uh, we should we should remember the term mcqs so uh, we are enabling the service broker on on the database that we have created uh, this is the command for enabling next we create a message so m stands for for for, for the message we are creating a message demo for for uh, a simple message demo with no validation uh, and then after the message we try to create a contract contract for the messages so there is a contract which we have created on the message uh, sent by the initiator next what we do is we create a queue for the sent sender and the receiver so so we have uh, created a sent queue and the receive queue and then we create a service on each of these queues on the contract so we create the services uh, we create a service for the send queue on the contract and then a receive queue on the contract so once this is done we are all set with our configuration so if you if you look at the database basically you find that there are there are queues services contracts and messages already created so next what we do is we try I mean it's all set so so what you do is simply queue this uh, the messages that you that you want so we are queuing the message on the contract so these are the command I mean we start a dialogue uh, and on the conversation of for the service and then queue the messages that's all that we do so this is a standard so I mean if you want to understand the commands and and, and and the standards you can refer MSDN but uh, this is out of the scope I mean this is not the uh, thing that we are addressing here we are trying to see how service broker can help us so what what we saw is service broker can asynchronously help us out in messaging and in processing the message so let's just try to queue one more That's all. So we have queued one more uh, order for, for processing. So that's the order that we have queued just now. So service broker will pick this up since the service is continuously running. I mean the SQL agent job is continuously running. So it will pick this up and process it. So that's that's how service broker will do. I mean we can uh, terminate. So, so our, uh, the issue that we can address here is locking concurrencies. Uh, we can uh, scale out our applications we just need to worry of queuing the orders and, and our uh, our thing ends there so we we are we can scale that out beautifully so service broker somewhere helps us uh, in, a, in a long way uh, in processing these messages that's all so it's, it's it's processed it has been picked up the order has been process so there is the fourth one and there we should have one more email perfect so we have the email so that's all said and done service broker helps us immensely in, in, in processing these um, messages asynchronously and we do not we can uh, get through the locking scenarios and a uh, lot of things can be simplified using service broker uh, so that was a, a beautiful case study for you guys I hope it's, it's helpful to you thank you so much